Hello! Today we're going to go through some apps I use to find free camping. Before we get into the apps that I use to find free camping, we're going to go on a little adventure. Before I go and move the trailer, because uh, one of my biggest fears is to uh, be like on a forest road and I come to a place where it's closed and I can't turn it around. So we're going to go check out a potential next camp spot. And um, before we also move, I wanna make sure that we're as stocked as possible. So I have to run to Walmart. So I have my rubber gloves and I'm gonna use my scarf as a mask. Why don't you come along? We'll go scope out a camp spot. Now when I came in, there were spots that said for like flags, I'll go back and I'll record that. And they all said for day use only, for day use only. And then, and then uh, I saw a couple spots that were roped off. Again, I gotta go back and record that. And they said uh, that they were for um, restoration, under restoration. Oh, do I see a camper? I just don't want to get kicked out. I don't want to. I don't want to get the trailer all the way back in here, and then, um, then I get kicked out. You know? What does that say? No camping. Closed for restoration. No, no vehicles there. No vehicles, even though it's like a perfect turnaround. Uh, since I wasn't very enchanted with the last scouting of the camp spot and our 14 days is up tomorrow we have to move tomorrow uh, I'm gonna go scout this other place that second spot looks good depending on your travel style and also what kind of rig you're in I think is gonna largely affect what travel app you want to use so I'm gonna show you several that I keep on my phone and then I'll show you which one I tend to use the most. Now, when I was just in the truck the first six months, seven months that I was traveling, things were a lot easier because I wasn't worried about getting in and out of places. It's four wheel drive, a Ford F-250 is pretty capable of off-roading. Um, and I knew I could get in and out of tight spots. With the addition of the trailer, I have some I hate to say, but limitations. My number one limitation with the trailer is just simply my confidence. Between yesterday and today, I've practiced backing it up a lot. Um, and I backed it into this spot, which I was really proud of myself for. I think a monkey could have backed it into the spot, but I was nonetheless very proud of myself. A lot of camp spots I find you're gonna need to have the ability to maneuver the trailer gracefully in order, especially now in the forest, to not hit a tree. Down in the desert, it was a lot easier. I mean, your biggest thing is just don't get caught in a wash. So I met someone when I was back in Nevada and they uh, were telling me a story of how they, I, th I think it was in Washington State, they said, they got into a camping area and then they realized that the road was closed and they had to reverse their trailer uh, I think it was two and a half miles. That sounds like maybe my worst nightmare. I think it's easier for couples because you have someone to spot you. You also have someone uh, on an emotional level to, to help assist you. Um, this definitely makes me more emotionally strong, which I think is great. Um, but I have to really be mindful of my self-talk as I try and navigate. You know, one of the things that I was lucky to do because there is so much camping in the area that I'm at is I was able to leave my trailer at the first camp spot and then take just the truck to go navigate and see uh, what might be a good fit. Let's go ahead, I'm going to take you uh, into my phone and we're going to look at a couple different camping apps. In my phone, I have everything organized into folders because that's how my brain works best. My camping folder has several things. This boondocking app, I used to use a lot and uh, it'll show you, let's say you want to be in Texas. Okay, it'll show you all these different spots that are in Texas. You can click on the info and it'll give you details. It'll give you, like for instance, this is Army Corps of Engineers. It'll give you the weather. 
down here at the bottom it gives you several sections you can share this or send it to your maps it'll give you images from Flickr so you can kind of see what the area is like the on X hunt that's a hunting app I overlander is a pretty good app not my favorite but you, you know, like I said check these out on your own let's just go through what I use the dirt is new to me I've used it a couple times it has a lot of campsites that you're supposed to book and pay for that's bullshit to me truck map has been really helpful since I started pulling the trailer because it will take you on routes that are meant for truck so that I don't get uh, myself caught up somewhere that the trailer doesn't pull nicely in dark sky is my favorite weather app O Ranger, Park Finder, that's more helpful for parks. Trucker Path, that's another, making sure I don't pull the trailer into somewhere I ought not. All Trails is more for hiking. Park Advisor is okay. I don't really love this app, but I do have it. Public Lands is helpful, so you make sure that you know, like sometimes when you're on BLM land or National Forest land, you... Uh, might be very close to private land and so this will give you the differential of what uh, like if you're on BLM, U.S. Forest, National Park, National Monuments, Army Corps of Engineers you see the whole list here okay but it makes sure that you're not oopsie on accidentally on uh, private land okay uh, U.S. Forest app kind of the same thing this shows you whether you're on uh, U.S. forest land or BLM land and uh, where potential camp spots, mostly KOAs, which you got to pay for. So again, not my favorite. RV parky is okay. Again, you're going to be looking at things you got to pay for or maybe an overnight spot. Avenza Maps is good for hiking, so for any hiking places. Gas Buddy is good to find the cheapest gas near you. And then there's freecampsites.net. Now they don't have an app, it's an actual website. I do like freecampsites.net, but I find some limitations with them. The reviews I don't feel like are as thorough. And again, that was fine when I was just in the truck, but now that I'm pulling the trailer, it makes me, makes, I'm just not confident with uh, my trailer reversing skills. Pulling it forward is fine. It's, it's the reversing. And sometimes you get yourself in a tight spot. So it's not a huge limitation. I can think of only maybe a handful of places I used to camp that I ought not be going anymore, but um, my favorite app is Campendium. So this has been my favorite as of late. You can find RV parks, public land, free camping, just overnight parking, dump stations. Um, so let's put in, so you can see Lake Havasu, Arizona, for instance. All right, and then it's gonna pull up all these different spots for you. Now, I only camp for free, so in your search bar, you can hit free, free, search. Took away some of the icons, and it left me with all these free camp spots near Lake Havasu City. Now, let's say I just want to click on one, and I can go, and I can go, okay, it's called this. It's state trust land, zero dollars. What's nice is this is uh, user supported, and so people leave reviews, and they can update. Let's say it was closed. People update with how much uh, cell signal they get. Um, they'll tell you whether or not it's like big rig friendly, cell service, hookups, tents okay. It'll give you the website. You can open it in maps. I usually use Google Maps. Google Maps is more accurate when it comes to directions, uh, but they do take your information and store it. Apple Maps is not as good about accuracy, but part of that is because they don't save or sell your information. So you use your best judgment depending on how paranoid you are. A lot of times what I do is I would, oh, I already have actually, I save this. So I save it in a camping folder on my phone so that let's say next time I'm in Lake Havasu City area, if I take out my X, I have that little blue marker left. And so that'll stay on my Apple Maps. This is actually all the blue are saved camping spots. That's probably a Walmart. Um, little Heart is somewhere that I loved staying. 
I had a really good time there, so I know that I want to go back there. So my Google, Google Maps, I have all these folders of different camping spots. I leave notes on them. And then uh, if I really love the spot, I put a heart. But back into Campendium, what's nice too, at least for me, is they have photos. So I can go, okay, if that person got their big rig in there, then I can probably get the trailer in there. Or I can at least see uh, what it might look like. So Campendium has been like my best app for finding free camping. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll explore with Google Earth to see what the area might look like and like, okay, there's going to be this windy road. Maybe I can fit in there. But I, I know what's nice for me is that I have a turnaround. So I, I don't have to try and reverse out of something. I can just, you know, go through. So <clears throat> this is how I find free camping. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, have a riot. Lux and riot. Lux and riot. Lux and riot. Lux and riot.